welcome back to Pia Talks, and we are talking true crime. Today, I am actually covering a review for an episode of Fear Thy Neighbor, season six, episode four. If you have not already subscribed, do it now. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so you'll always be notified when I post new content. And today we are talking about Kevin Neal. You could clearly tell during the episode of Fear Thy Neighbor that Kevin was clearly mentally unstable. But by the end of that episode, I was absolutely positive that he was completely out of his mind. Either that or he was taken over by pure evil. This takes place in California in a place called Rancho Tahima which I hope I am pronouncing that correctly. Um, Kevin and his wife, Barbara, moved into a really nice neighborhood in Rancho Tahima. And they lived across the street from Danny Elliott, his mom, Diana Steele, his seven-year-old son, Gage, and his girlfriend, Haley. Gage lost his mother six years prior to an illness, and so he was being raised by his father and his grandmother and Haley, his dad's girlfriend, who was like a second mom to him, and she took really good care of Gage. Danny also had a really cool friend who lived across the street named Johnny. Johnny and his wife, Tiffany, had two sons, and they were all really cool neighbors. They enjoyed hanging out together, having cookouts, you know, their kids would play together. They had a lot in common and they would always watch each other's back, you know, in case they saw anything bad happening in the neighborhood, they would, you know, let each other know. When Kevin and his wife, Barbara, moved into the neighborhood, they all thought, oh, this is cool. You know, we're getting some new people in the neighborhood. Let's, you know, welcome them to the area. And they did. They were very sweet, very gracious and welcoming, you know, inviting, you know, Kevin and his wife to come over to, you know, cookouts and things like that. And everything seemed to be fine. Everything was going well. Kevin is a motorcycle enthusiast. You know, he repairs and restores motorcycles. And, you know, that was just his passion. Him and his wife say that, you know, they moved into the neighborhood because they wanted to be able to have their privacy and just be able to relax and enjoy, you know, their new home, which was fine. And everything was going well until Danny, who lives across the street from the Neals, he liked to make a little extra money by gathering up scrap metal. However, he would have all the scrap metal and everything in the front yard, which Kevin was not a fan of. The rest of the neighbors were okay with it. They had gotten used to him collecting his scrap metal and it being all over the place. You know, that was his side hustle and they were okay with it. You know, he's a single father, you know, doing his thing, whatever he can to make ends meet. Well, Kevin decided to make his self-designated block captain and decided that that was not a good look because it was bringing down property values. And people do stuff like that. I think that every neighborhood has that one neighbor who is a stickler for every rule and will try to hound and act like they are block patrol, block president, and you know, want to tell you about your grass. Your grass is a couple inches above the legal limit. You know, there's always neighbors like that. But Danny didn't care what Kevin was saying. He was going to continue to do his scrap metal thing, which he should be able to. It's on his property, not yours. The one thing that really propelled the situation to not be good is Kevin really was a daredevil. He liked to ride his motorcycle and he liked to ride it fast, which is not a problem as long as you're not riding it fast in a residential area where children walk to and from school. Kevin one day was riding his bike at about 50 miles an hour and two of the neighborhood kids had to jump out of the way from being hit by him. One of those kids happened to be Danny's son, Gage. When the parents went to approach him about the speed of his motorcycle in the neighborhood and what happened to the kids, he did not take it very well. He pretty much told them to mind their damn business, get off of his property and go back to their homes. They were all thinking, what the hell is wrong with him? And he's thinking, what the hell is wrong with you? You know, I'm gonna do what I wanna do, which, you know, it's fine if you wanna ride your motorcycle 
all day if you want and it's fine if you want to ride it fast we don't want you riding it you know 50 miles an hour in a residential neighborhood where children are walking back and forth to school and there's no sidewalks so there's nowhere else for them to be you know as an adult the other parents thought this was just self-explanatory you know cut the shit don't ride your bike fast especially when the kids are in the street one evening Kevin and his wife have the windows open. They're relaxing, enjoying their evening, and a very foul odor comes in. The odor was so bad to the point where it made Barbara sick. Kevin goes out and notices that Danny has a person visiting his house, and he's assuming that the smell is coming from Danny's house and that Danny must be making meth. That must have been one hell of an odor. I have no idea what the smell of meth is smells like however I do watch the news and I do see that occasionally some people making meth have explosions and I can understand being a neighbor and being concerned that one of your neighbors might be making meth and you would be concerned you know if they blow up the damn neighborhood that affects you right so I'm okay pretty much with that you're suspecting that maybe they might be making meth but he comes to his house, he calls the police, and he says he thinks that his neighbor is making meth. The police ask pretty much, do you have any, any evidence? Kevin has no evidence, and the police tell him pretty much that they have other cases, other things to do that are more prior, that are higher up on the priority list, so they're not going to be able to come out to check this suspected possible meth. Well, after repeated calls, the police actually do show up at Danny's house with a full search warrant. They search his entire house and his property and they go back and they let Kevin know Danny is not at any time making meth. They're not sure what that smell is, but he is not making meth. Kevin does not believe this. He thinks the police just don't like him and they're allowing Danny to continue to make meth at his house. Danny by this point has gotten extremely pissed off. He is mad as hell at Kevin and wants to know what is your problem? Why do you dislike me so much that you would send the police over to my house to check for meth? Danny is thinking that Kevin is trying to get his son Gage taken from him. So you know this is not going well. Kevin decides that since the police are obviously not doing their job and they don't like him so he's going to have to do the job for them. He sets up surveillance cameras outside of his house that are laser focused on Danny's house to prove that Danny is making meth. This absolutely pisses Danny off, but not only Danny, it pisses off the other neighbors too. So the neighbors periodically drive past the cameras and, and flip Kevin off, scream and holler all kinds of obscenities because they are thinking that here he is trying to be block captain, trying to save the neighborhood from the meth problem that they don't have and, you know, infringing on their rights. Kevin still being upset that the police are not cracking down on this meth situation that is not a real situation, decides that he would like to have target practice in his backyard at all hours of the night, letting off hundreds of rounds of shots from an AR rifle. What? What? These people are people who are working class. They have to go to work the next day. They have to go to school the next day. They are freaked out because they're thinking these bullets could fly through our house at any moment. What the hell is going on? The neighbors, you know, they ask him like, dude, cut it out. You know, what's going on with these late night target practice what's happening what's going on he didn't want to hear that he has the right to do whatever he wants so after several nights of this the neighbors decide to call the police the police come out they talk to Kevin and they say listen it's illegal for you to fire off this gun after 11 p.m. he gets all upset accuses the police of taking Danny and the rest of the neighbors side everybody's against me and the police say listen Cut it out. Do not fire your weapon after 11 p.m. The police leave. 
And as soon as they leave, he's back to shooting. He did not care. It got to the point where after the neighbors had called the police so many times and he had went back to shooting after they left, they just said, forget it. And they stopped calling. The police also told Kevin that if he did not stop filing false reports against Danny across the street, they were going to arrest him. Now this also sent him to another place. This man was already walking the fine line of mental illness but now you have let him know that he is filing false complaints. There is no meth across the street. Danny is not making meth across the street. What? His mind cannot compute. He, you are wrong. You are wrong. So he still decides that it is his job to continue to walk the perimeter of his property and Danny's property and record it so that he could prove there is meth being made even though there's no meth, no meth. After all the shooting, the police calling, the meth investigations, Danny, as well as the rest of the neighbors on the street, like Johnny and Tiffany, decide that they are from now on, anytime their children are outside, they are gonna be outside with them the entire time. Also, the children, even though they are in walking distance of the school, they will drive them to and from school because they have no idea what is going through Kevin's head. You know, he's out late at night having this crazy target practice. At the same time, while he's out there shooting his targets, he's screaming and hollering about how he's going to kill the seven-year-old boy and the rest of the people in the neighborhood that are against him. I think he should have been arrested just for those threats. How are you going to threaten a seven-year-old? This kid has nothing to do with you and your situation. He has nothing to do with his father and your insinuations that his father is making meth. This little boy is seven. All he wants to do is play outside and go to school and not be ran over by your motorcycle. Most of the neighbors were so frightened that they started getting their conceal and carry license, started learning how to shoot because they were nervous just coming out of their homes. That is crazy. So these people went from really enjoying their neighborhood, enjoying each other, having backyard barbecues, watching their kids play outside to being scared to go outside without a weapon because this guy wants to be neighborhood watch, crime stopper, detective, and drill sergeant all in one. Really? Well, on one of his days out patrolling to make sure that Danny is not making meth and to try to get proof that Danny's not making meth, Danny's mom and his girlfriend are taking a walk. So they tried to take a shortcut through, through the woods they end up being shot at by Kevin. Kevin is shooting at these people and telling them to get off his property. They were close to his property, but they were not on his property. They knew where his property line was and they were not trying to go on this man's property. Nobody wants to set this guy off. He ends up punching Danny's mom in the face and stabbing his girlfriend Haley, stabbing her. You punched this 60 some year old woman in the face and then stabbed this lady because they were on your property, which they weren't. When the police got there, he said that he was defending himself because they attacked him and that the girlfriend Haley pulled a knife out and he was grabbing it from her and somehow she must have stabbed herself. No, the police did not buy it. He was arrested. And he needed to be arrested, but not only did they arrest him, they took all the guns in his possession. He goes to jail. Haley goes off in an ambulance to the hospital to get checked from her stab wounds. And his bail is set at $150,000. Kevin's mom bails him out. When they get home from the emergency room, Kevin is sitting out on his front porch. He got arrested and bailed out and was home before she got back from the emergency room. I mean, really? You can't make this stuff up. You punched a woman, shot at them, and then stabbed somebody and you are out of jail on bail before the woman is even stitched up and home. 
Police let him know that he's looking at a possible 15 years in prison for stabbing this woman. His wife, Barbara, is not really feeling Kevin. She is not feeling this behavior, how he is treating the neighbors, how the neighbors are now treating them. She is not happy with this at all. And she lets him know that she wants it to stop to the point where she wants to leave. She wants to move. She just wants to walk away from him and the situation because it's not safe. She tells him, you know, these people also have weapons. What if they decide to come over here and, you know, pretty much light us up for your behavior? He is not hearing that. He is like, Barbara, shut up because you're not going anywhere. And he is absolutely pissed off that the police took all of his guns, so much so that he just orders one through the mail. The gun shows up and he's back in business, another AR, and he's back out in the yard screaming and hollering about killing the neighbors and shooting off rounds. Can you imagine how the neighbors felt when they heard those shots go off? Clearly this man would stab a woman and punch a 68 year old woman. Mm -mm. We are not safe. We are not safe. In my opinion, Kevin crosses that mental line and is completely insane, if you ask me. On November 13th, 2017, Kevin loses it. He shoots his wife, Barbara, to death. Then he hides her in a cubby space that he made under the floorboards in their house. And they believe that he killed her because she wanted to leave him. At that point, it's a done deal. He is looking at the possibility of 15 years in jail. He has killed his wife. He's at the breaking point. He has nothing to lose and he doesn't care anymore. This makes him even more dangerous than he was before. The next day, November the 14th, 2017, he goes on an all out shooting rampage. He leaves his house. He goes over to Danny's. He kills Danny and his mom. The only reason Gage was not killed is Gage had already been dropped off at school. Haley was not murdered because she was out of town at the time. However, I believe that if Gage and Haley were home, they would have been killed as well. After he killed Danny and his mother, he steals one of his other neighbor's truck and he goes out driving in this truck, randomly firing at pedestrians. At an intersection, he actually bumps into Tiffany, the neighbor from across the street, the wife of Johnny. He bumps the back of her car, then pulls up beside her and unleashes a storm of bullets on her and her children in the car. Her son is shot in the leg twice and Tiffany is shot multiple times. She was really near death. Tiffany was shot four times and one of the bullets was very near to her heart. She had a gun in her car and a license to carry, but she was unable to get to it and shoot him fast enough before he pulled off. She stopped over four motorists to try to get help and they all just quickly drove by. Nobody stopped to help her. Finally, she was able to get a deputy sheriff who was able to call an ambulance to get her and her son some help. Kevin, however, had made his way to Rancho Tahima Elementary School, the school where Gage attends. Sarah, the school's secretary, hears gunshots in the area and she's able to quickly get every child into the school and have the school go on lockdown. Neil actually crashes his pickup truck through the front gates of the school. He exits from his vehicle with his AK-15 semi-automatic weapon and he starts firing repeatedly into the windows and the walls of the school because he couldn't get in through the doors because they were locked. He was actually targeting Gage. He was doing everything he could to kill this little boy. One student who was hiding under a desk was actually shot when the bullet actually penetrated through a wall. Oh God. One student was actually shot in the chest from another bullet that penetrated through a wall. He shot a lady who was actually trying to distract him from shooting at the children. She got shot. This man fired nearly a hundred rounds into that school. 
trying to kill a child. They had surveillance video of him actually going behind the school into a field, firing into the air out of frustration that he's not able to get into the school to kill this kid. What? He actually flees the school, rams his truck into the vehicle of another car with two people in it. He fires upon the people and kills the female driver in the car. Her husband was wounded in the leg. The only reason why the husband is even alive is he pleaded with Neil for his life. Another passerby who had no idea what was going on drove by and saw Neil and asked him if he was okay. A good Samaritan. He asked the shooter, not knowing, if he was okay. Neil shot him for being a good Samaritan. Thank God the man did not die. He does go on with his rampage and he ends up killing someone else. As he's being pursued by law enforcement, he's actually chasing an innocent victim and shooting at him from his car. At the same time, police are trying to pursue him. The police end up ramming his stolen truck. As his truck finally comes to a stop, he tries to ambush the officers by shooting at them. They have a heated gunfire exchange and Neil ends up killing himself. He shot himself right above the eye. All of this took place in a space of 25 minutes. 25 minutes. In 25 minutes, Kevin Neal killed five people and wounded 18. And killed himself. So there is no justice for any of these victims. No justice for their families, their friends, people who love them. And for what? For what? Because they didn't want you to ride your motorcycle 50 miles an hour down the street. Because you couldn't prove that Danny was selling meth. Because they didn't want you shooting off hundreds of rounds after midnight scaring the hell out of the neighbors and the children because you couldn't be in control of everyone in all situations i don't i don't get it it seems to me that kevin had to be mentally ill and that there were plenty of signs that something was not right with this man i have no idea why no one in his family, no friends, no one thought, he's unstable as hell. Maybe we should get him some help. Now Gage has no dad, no mom. He is being raised by family members. This child deserves his dad, his parents. All the random people who didn't even live on your street that were shot and hurt. Those children at the school. This one is tough. This one is tough. You always hear those stories where people are, say, oh, well, he was such a nice guy. I just can't believe it. Why would he do something like that? There were never any signs. There were plenty of signs with Kevin. There were plenty of signs. And when his mother bailed him out, I wonder why she didn't think, maybe we should put him in a mental hospital, you know? Maybe get him on a mental hold for a, you know, even 72 hour hold to figure out what's happening with my son. You know, why is he acting like this? Five people lost their lives. 18 people were hurt. Those children at that school, they said it was about 100 children in that class. They will forever be affected by what happened to them. The teachers at the school. Thank God that secretary was smart, heard the gunshots and got all those children off the playground and into the school and locked down. Those children will never be without those thoughts. 
those memories and poor Gage. Ah. I don't know. One thing I do know is we've got to do something with our mental health system here. We've got to start helping people because things like this cannot continue to happen. Again, I am truly sorry for the family of all the victims. I'm really sorry. I, and sorry is not enough. Until next time.